Hi everybody, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me today on Art on the Creek. I'm really happy you're here with me in my home studio in Parker, Colorado. What I wanna go over today, I've had a lot of questions from you, thank you for your questions by the way, about where do you begin? How do you start a painting? How do you know where to start? Well, first of all, there's no right or wrong answer. But I have some reference photos that I took for you that we can share today. They're not good photos but the memory I have is good. And what we see with our eyes is a little bit different than what we see with our camera. So I'm going to show you where to begin. I'm going to show you how to get a practice drawing from a reference photo that is overly cluttered. Narrow it down to what you wanna draw. We'll cover that in this video. And then in the next video, our follow-up, we'll turn that drawing into a watercolor painting. Are you ready? Let's start with part one. Um, okay, so how do you approach? Where do you start? What do you do? Well, I have a picture that I want to show you and I'll just, I'll put it up here while I'm talking. We always get deer in our yard as I'm sure I've talked about before. And uh, before we had a huge hailstorm, I can't remember what day I took these pictures, but this was um, earlier this month. It was in May, I think it was before Mother's Day. So first part of May. The, uh, the sweetest part of the blossoms were out. They like to eat the blossoms off of our cherry tree. So I took all of these pictures. And when you look at them, what you will see is that the deer is the same color as the bark and there's just hardly any blossoms on the tree. The tree's looking really scrawny. But if you can break it down and remember what you saw and what attracted you to that moment, you can really create a pretty good painting out of a, just a mess. So this picture is the one we're going to use today. And the, the reason that I like this one is because it, I finally got the deer to kind of be in profile. So what I do before I set pencil to watercolor paper, um, this is one of the sketchbooks that I keep in front of the TV and I just draw random things. But what I did here, this is all in color pencil and I like to do this in monochrome. Uh, so whenever you plan your painting, I highly recommend not using a pencil. I recommend using a colored pencil. Uh, that way, not an erasable colored pencil, but one that you actually have to commit your lines to. That way you'll be more bold and forthcoming in where you put your lines and you'll, you will spend less time thinking about it because I think that's what gets a lot of us stuck is that we overthink it. So I'm going to show you how to break this down and not overthink it. So these aren't the colored pencils that I used, but let me get another color here so that you can see. All right, so the first thing that I did here was you're going to want the basic shape of what it is that you're drawing. So first thing we're going to do is make the oval for the deer's body. And then you notice that the knees are a little bit knock-kneed. So I just draw the line of where I think that is gonna go and then another little line. And this one is coming down you. I want to include the shoulder here, come down and come down again. And then for this back leg here, realize where the curve of this oval is, it's going to come at this far end. So you see, it's just really loose and sketchy at this point. I'm just blocking things in and he's really knock kneed back here or she, I guess. So I want to make sure I get that angle, right? And then this leg under here comes and I want to kind of try and figure out where it meets there, catch that, come down and then come down this way. And then I'll fill in this detail as needed. So those are the first steps that I do. When I took a picture of this deer, her little tail wasn't showing. I thought maybe I might add a tail when I paint her because their tails are pretty cute. They have a little black tip. And uh, it, this is a mule deer, by the way. Then I notice, okay, what, I've got her body, I've got her legs. And you also wanna be conscious about height and size. So what I'm doing, I'm gonna make the painting about this very size here. When I'm working from my phone, I will expand it to where I feel like that head or that part of the body is about the size that it would translate to be here. Now, if you don't wanna do that, you can take your photo and print it off 
you can trace it, you can bypass this step altogether. And when you're tracing it, then you would just include the parts that you think are, uh, are pertinent. So now I wanna get the basic angle of her neck. So I will draw a straight line there. And then there's this little part here where her fur changes. So I wanted to note that. Now we have her head and you're, it's basically an oval shape. So I'm going to do that. Then we're gonna put the ears in. So this is where I really zoom in. And you notice that her eye, the bone structure on her eye goes beyond the eyeball itself because she, there's a ridge up here and another ridge over here. And then her eye comes inside of that. Now in the photo, she doesn't have a little reflection, but I'm gonna put one in because otherwise she will look like a soulless creature. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in. And then you can adjust the angle of her of the forehead. You can commit to the lines you want. You can get the bridge of her nose, come down and then add the, the her nose here. And you just, this, this initial line that you put in just ends up being a guide for you. You don't have to really worry about meeting that line. You're just getting the basic shape there when you draw that oval. And then her lip will come down. The tongue is sticking out, going for a branch. The other lip is down here and the chin comes down a bit. And at this point, when I'm drawing the lines I wanna to commit to, you see I'm doing little, little smaller lines. And she does have some bone structure in here that we can see. So we're gonna shade this and shade this a little bit. She's also got some bone structure back here that I wanna remember. These are just marks for me to remember when I'm painting what it is that I wanna capture. So now that I've got this part here where this connects, then I can take this angle of her neck and bring it down. Same here, I can come off the back of her head and bring it down here. I can add this detail on her ear. I want it folded over and then we'll have this back part here. And she has the little hairs on the inside. We cannot see her other ear, but I think I might add it in. I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna put a little line there. And then when I'm painting, we shall see if that's what I want to do. And then you go in and you finalize the curves of her body. There's a little bump here. Her spine actually comes down about here. This is the other thing when you're drawing animals, you want to be very conscious that there is a skeleton under this cuteness. So sometimes those skeletal uh, and musculature forms will show through. And on this little gal, it, it is. So now I'm gonna come down here and kind of commit to this line of her hip, adding this in here. And then this is her, her body here. The shoulder kind of comes off of this a little bit, but I'm gonna scoot it over, bring that down, make the ovals for her knees come down this way and then bring her feet down. And I'm just doing two little rectangles for her hooves because that's all we need. Same thing here, I'll come down over this, uh, over the rock here and uh, pull into her, her hooves there. There's her knee. And I kinda want these to be about the same size when I'm done. And then this piece here comes off of the neck in a little bit and then down. And this part here will come down here on her chest, down to a point for her rib cage, and then up a bit. And let's see, we need to get her back legs in. So there's a knee there. And we're gonna come into that knee and down. Come this way around the knee and down and you can make this as detailed as you want you really realize when you're looking at this picture zoomed in you can see an awful lot of tendons and clefts i'm not going to make it that detailed when i paint uh, but you sure can if that's if you want to concentrate on all of that so we can see this hoof and then i'm going to have it so that this hoof is behind the rock so there's the rock this is coming up to her what would you call that knee her back leg, I don't know. They bend backwards like a dog. So I don't know what they call that. I always call them knees. <laughs>
Okay, so here we go. Here is the basic lines of our deer. And I hope that helps you. I hope that helps you to understand kind of how I approach locking out the clutter. So now I've got the deer. That is the main focus of the painting. That's what you want to start with is the deer. And then I need to put some branches around her. Now, when you look at the photo, she's kind of tangled in the branches, but I didn't want to have her wrapped up in the branches because when you paint that, it might not look, when I paint it anyway, I felt like it might not look too friendly. I thought it might look like she was getting strangled. But uh, so what I'm going to do instead is have the branches come behind her. And let's see, we can just put some other branches on here. I'm just making the suggestion of a tree and kind of leading some of these branches into her mouth so that she can have something to eat. And this one, I want her to be to kind of be pulling it down. So we'll do that there. And just kind of putting some twigs off of here. Maybe this branch could be a little stronger. Just kind of trying to get some balance to fill this space here. She's looking this way, so I want the tree to definitely be over here, um, which is the way it was in real life. But I really want the focus to kind of be where she's leading. So when you're looking at Peg, this is true. Um, once upon a time in my life, I did newspaper layout. And when you're working on advertisements at that time, the school of thought was when, when your uh, customer is reading the ad, they're going to scan it like a Z. So you want to have your important bits of information here, here, and here. So when you keep that in mind, in addition to the rule of thirds with art, and that is where you're dividing your paper into thirds, vertically and horizontally, the intersection points are going to be the parts uh, that will have some meaning in your painting. So over here, we've got her neck and we have the tree. We've got the deer and the deer leading into the rocks. You could change this around. You could put her eye at one of these points, however you want to set it up. But for me, I like this white space over here. I like that she's leaning this way. Your eyes are going to tend to look to break things up in, in your brain when you're looking at something. And this is a good way to do it is to remember that Z in advertising and <laughs> I don't even know if they still do that. And the third, the rule of thirds is something you'll hear from artists all the time. I just also incorporate that Z because when you scan something visually, you're still doing that way of reading it. All right, so back to this. Now we're gonna come back here and I just kind of let my pencil, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling it, just letting it go loose. And just kind of realizing that I'm going to put some uh, little blossoms and and leaves on here nothing really definitive and then I can put in the tree and I'm doing this with the side of the pencil so that I can just add some bark lines now we have to deal with the rocks the rock that she's standing on is really big um, you can paint a rock any way you want to, but what I'm going to do is to make this rock a little bit more geometric and a little bit more exaggerated. This rock back here kind of looks the same. I kind of like how that one came out. So we're going to keep that. So that's the surface of the rock. There is a, a vertical point down here. I'm going to shade that and here as well. So now right away I've created form and dimension with that rock back there. You can do the same here. I'm just going to do some geometric shapes that may or may not have to be exactly like the rock that we see in the picture, but that's okay. Just going to kind of make it set up so that she can have something to stand on and so that my rock can have, oh wait, that's the tree. Never mind that line. Uh, so that my rock can have a, a little bit of place to be here. Now, when you are coloring this, what I like to do to, uh, to make myself remember is to color in the direction that would show that that is the plane. So this means on the top, this is gonna come down. So we're gonna have these lines color this way. It's easier to do it if you uh, leave a little bit of space. And this one is gonna have yet another direction because that part of the rock could be sticking out or going in same with back here. We're going to have this part coming straight down. 
this part going across. This little rock here can be going this way. And this is just in your drawing so that you can remember that these parts of the rock are going to be different when you paint them. These are all just visual cues to remind yourself what you want to do with painting. There. And then we'll just fill this in somehow. So that is how I approach removing clutter from a painting and, and this is the practice drawing that I will do ahead of time before I even translate it here and for me working with colored pencil is very easy because you have so much ability to add shading and decide where you want to put things and by drawing it like this first for me that helps me remember how I want it to look here. So now that you've got to this point there's a couple ways that you can get to here. You can either print off that picture that you were working with before and trace it, or you can use your, your drawing and draw from it again. And that's what I'm going to do for us here today is I'm going to draw from it again. Now I want this to have an organic edge, so I'm not going to put the, the border tape around it. So first things first, got your click pencil. Now I've obviously got this sped up because we're just going to repeat those exact same steps and tips that I gave you in the first part of this video. We're going to repeat that just by using pencil on watercolor paper. Be bold. Go ahead, draw on that watercolor paper. You can always erase it. It really is okay. The best eraser that I've found to use on watercolor paper is a kneaded eraser, and we'll go over that in, in just a second. They're real affordable and easy to have. I do have a, a white eraser there shown in this shot. That is a, a plastic or a vinyl eraser, a uh, high polymer. Those work really well too because they tend not to tear up your, your page and they don't smudge at all. But I'm just repeating the same exact steps that I did in the first part here and I'm using a dry brush to remove the erasure crumbs. And I'm just kind of laying out this deer, changing the height of the legs a little bit, just making sure I've got a, all the room that I need. I will let you know though that if you're drawing something that you're going to want to frame, give yourself a little bit more of a margin than this. You might want to go ahead and tape it off so that you do have enough margin to frame it. Um, this is just in my sketchbook, so I decided to just go ahead and fill it to the edge of the page. All right, let's see where we're at now. What I really suggest you have at this point is a kneaded eraser. Here we go. I haven't used mine and it's been cold down here, so let me, oh good. When you have a kneaded eraser, just pull it like this until it's supple. Just play with it, knead it before you use it. Okay, that's pretty good. And now I'm just going to roll over this that will help make those hard lines not quite as hard and it should get rid of most of the marker lines just kind of naturally. There. And I think that's good enough. I hope you guys can kind of see where we're going with that. Let me put the colored pencil away. Well everyone, I can't show you the finished painting. When I'm filming this little closing bit, I've already got it finished. So I'm going to show you this right now to close out the video. So remember what we did. We block in our shapes of ovals, lines, circles, triangles. Use familiar geometric shapes. Give yourself geometric planes to reference. And all of the 12 steps that I highlighted for you in the beginning of this video, you might want to go back and rewind and um, write them down a little bit. At any rate, those are the steps that I use to help me declutter a reference photo, give me a good starting point, and make that subject the real shining star of the painting. Make sure you've got good form and balance, and your painting is going to be a winner. All right, we will hit the watercolor part of this in our next video. Until then, everyone have a great evening, and we will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye now.